Lord, your praise. Lord, your praise. I love worshiping the Lord outside. I think uh, one of the most glorious things that I get to do is take people out to the ocean and baptize them. Stand around with the saints of God. Get right in the big middle of where it's all going on. Stand there and praise the name of Jesus and take people out fully dressed in the water so that everybody knows something weird is going on, something different is going on. And then watch as the power and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, as, as the wonderful working power of the Holy Ghost testifies of the most glorious thing that can possibly take place in anyone's life. Where they're transformed by the power of God, born of the Spirit, given a new heart and a new spirit. And the Holy Ghost comes to live on the inside. And this is something that we are desperate about seeing taking place in every house, every street corner, in the, in, in the lives of every single human being in Southern California, beginning with San Diego County of about 3 million people, spilling on over into OCO, Orange County, LA County sweeping on down in Tijuana and uh, basically at the end of it some some 20 million people shaken by the power of God now these are these are the things these are the things that the Holy Spirit wants to do the Lord showed me 32 years ago and I've stood here prophesying for 32 years we've watched a lot of things happen a lot of people come and go we know what father is going to do we've heard a sound from heaven we've seen a heavenly vision and the Lord has made it very clear to me that He's doing something very great and He's waiting for our people who's willing to do it with Him. So many people want to do what happened in the past. They want to do what they can conceptualize with their head or what some hero of faith did. But Father's got bigger plans for you and me. And I pray in the name of Jesus over the next two, three days tonight, Saturday night, Sunday night, Saturday morning through the day, Sunday morning, you come join with us. See, there's several ways to contend for a move of God. And this is one of them where we just gather together and we begin to praise Him. And this isn't about somebody's agenda. It isn't about a personality. There's something about Pat and me. we so desperate for Jesus. We, we are unique people on the face of the earth. I met Pat and Pat said, you know, uh, I just wrote a book. Uh, I am remnant. I see you wrote a book about me. I am remnant. He looks at me and he said, you are remnant. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. The, better, the bottom line of it is we just, some of us just know who we are. And, and if you tonight do not know who you are, we want to give you an assignment from heaven directly by the Holy Ghost to inform you of what your divine commission and call of Almighty God is upon your life to do. That's what it's all about. That's why we're standing here. And I'm, I'm praying, I'm crying out to God. I'm saying, Father, draw him from the east and the west. Draw him from the north and the south. Not about a man, not about a personality, but about you, about a desperate need to see the power of God released that will eclipse and, and, and erase all religion and ideologies about him. I just want to see Jesus, and the Holy Spirit wants to reveal him. This is how I wake up in the morning. Those of you who are visiting, we welcome you. These are my children. My oldest son, Joshua, Daniel, Elizabeth, Ruth Ann. And I point them out because they're my witnesses. I wake up like this in the morning. I go to bed like this at night. I live it on vacation. I, I live it when I'm on Sunday morning. I live it every day. I'm so desperate. Or Jesus and the things that he wants to do to set people free from the bonds of sin and deception and we're so blessed that you come here to stand with us tonight and I'm going to tell you if you think you're going to find something normal around here you I'm going to just get you ready right now but nothing normal going to be here if you think if you think we're going to be common and fit in I'm just going to just I want to just help you I want to ease you on into this Man, I'm telling you, we're busted on the inside because God put our glory on the inside of us, the Spirit of the Son saying, Oh, God, 
Come now. Do that which only you can do. Come bring your kingdom now. Come rule. Come reign in Jesus' name. And I, we just want you to catch the fire. We want you to catch the fire of it. And when you do, when you get lit up with the fire of it, <laughs> you'll shine like a light. Hallelujah. Now, here's something that we love to do. We love to give because we follow Jesus Christ who teaches us about giving on a level that goes beyond anything that people have ever been able to quantify. God the Father gave His only begotten Son for you and me. Hallelujah. Jesus gave everything. He gave His life. He laid it down for you and me so that you and I could un know an unlimited, immeasurable, unending life. And so we're going to, they're handing out cards right now and envelopes so that you can place your finances in. If you're writing a check, write it to the abiding place, APM. That's all you got to put, APM. Say APM. And uh, all of the finances, 100% of them, will go to Pat's ministry. For those of you that were with us just this past weekend, I mean, you know, I was just so blessed. I was so blessed. Because we received an offering for northern Iraq when Brother Yun was here. And it was like $12,000 in a few cents. And it immediately went there. It's immediately, go ahead and big, give a big giant thank you, Lord Jesus, for people who know how to uh, cooperate with it. Cooperate with your word, with your will, with your purpose. So I'm going to pray a blessing over your finances right now. I'm a man of faith. I'm a miracle man. In other words, I'm filled with the Spirit, and God told me to go everywhere functioning in those things that the Holy Ghost does, and He does miracles. And so we found a way to see miracles take place, and it's just by simple obedience. <laughs> when you obey God, no matter how big or how challenging or how small or how seemingly meaningless it is, when we obey God, a miracle takes place. So we want you to obey God tonight. We're going to receive an offering because here's what we're doing. Listen, everybody I know in ministry, I know that, I know that Pat looks to, to, to Pastor Reinhard Bonnke. I have dear friends like Tim Hall, Evangelist Tim Hall, who's also a person who's over this ministry. And, and we and so many ministers of the gospel throughout the world are saying, it's the day America is at a crossroads. We are at a time. Listen to me. You're on a day. You're on a schedule right now in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in events that are going to take place that you cannot even imagine because the scale of disaster that is about to take place. People don't want to hear that, but I'm telling you. But at the same time, Everybody who knows the Lord, they're going to be over in a glory realm, bringing in a harvest that goes beyond all that anybody ever imagined. And that right now, what we have to do is we have to run with the move of God throughout the United States of America. So I want you to know specifically what you're going to be giving into tonight. You're going to be giving in to the ministry that Pat has, that he's champion right now, I Am Remnant. And for the purpose of taking the gospel to every town, city, and village in the United States of America with a call and a cry for people to respond to the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ because there's only one possible place of refuge. There's only one possible hope for this nation. There's only one possibility that we would be preserved. And that is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ on fire with the Holy Ghost. Listen, the, listen, God is a God of covenant, but he said, if you're lukewarm, he said, I have no fellowship with you, I have no relationship with you. For the fundamental aspect of covenant is relationship. And so many people turn to their own way. And I want you to get together with me tonight and say, I'm going to be fiery. I'm going to be passionate about my giving. I'm not going to be lukewarm about my giving. I'm not going to be lukewarm about my prayer. I'm not going to be lukewarm about my praise. I'm not going to be lukewarm about my commitment. It's all for you, Lord. This offering that you provided for me to have. Christ Jesus. What an amazing offering we got tonight, people. Hey, did you know that, how many of you knew, how many of you know that Jesus is here? Listen, Christ Jesus, he's really here. The beauty and the glory of his presence is here. Tomorrow night is a good night to have every one of these chairs filled up. 
I want you to grab people. I want you to bring them. I want you to come. And for no other reason, come and stand with us for a move of God, something bigger than any human being can do. Those things that Father is more passionate about doing than any man. I want you to just give over your time over the next three days to seeking the Lord with all your heart and watch what Father will do. Father's, Father is Father's pretty serious about this. He said, I tell you what, when your tongue is so thick from thirst, so thick that you can't hardly drink water, and you, you, you're so desperate for a drink, ask me in that kind of hunger and that kind of thirst. See, he puts this kind of passion on the inside of us. He said, then I'll pour out the glory of heaven upon your soul. And this is where we're at. We're just desperate. I want you to come and just join with us in this cry to heaven. Lord Jesus, let your fire fall. Let the glory of your presence overwhelm every heart in life. In Jesus' name. So, so um, ushers, please go ahead. I, you, you know, when I'm halfway into this, go ahead and just hand out those offering baskets. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't hold back. People can, I can talk while the baskets go around. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, precious Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, holy is the name of the living God. Take my life, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And I fall down on my knees. And I fall. And I fall down. And I fall at your feet. Yes, I fall at your feet. Would I fall at your feet and worship you? Everybody, welcome Pat Schatz line. Pat, come on, man. Hey, we need monitors up here. We have none. Hallelujah. Welcome. The remnant cannot be defined by man's concepts because they find their value in the eyes of a Savior. Jesus. The remnant knows the I am has now made them his. The remnant rescues the hurting and defends the fatherless. The remnant chooses to let go of past hurts in order to experience the freedom that comes with forgiving and moving forward. The remnant chooses to leave a life of compromise for the spirit of consecration. But all has everything to give. The remnant is afraid of only one thing. And time will not permit all that we feel called by God to do. This is more than just a spoken word, but a declaration of truth. We are. Remnant. Come on, let's give God a praise across here. Come on. Come on, you can do better than that. No, we're not done. Get up on your feet and praise Him. I feel the Holy Spirit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The Spirit of the Lord. Oh my goodness, I, I, I feel his presence and his glory and, and uh, uh, I was praying and I said, God, what is the keys to this service tonight? And he said one thing, he said brokenness and he said brokenness, you know, uh, purity is the backbone of authority, but brokenness is the, is the, uh, the doorway to his presence and, and I'm learning right now that it's only the desperate that, that want him. So would you lift your hands across this place? And here we are under heaven's ceiling, not under a, a, a building ceiling. 
And God says, I am sticking my face into this room tonight. And I have watched as my people have bathed me in praise. And the Lord says, if you'll stand there for a moment, the tears of his glory will drop on your forehead now. All over the room, cry out to him in an intimate, powerful way, almost a, 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 a stirring, almost like you've just seen your loved one for the first time in years. Come on, that's what God says to do. He says, if you'll be desperate for me, I will stir this place. I will pour out my glory. It's going to run up the freeway right now. God says, my presence is here. God says, my freedom is here. Come on, cry out to him. If you're watching by internet, wherever you're at, drop to your knees and cry out to him. The Spirit of the Lord says, I will have my people. I will pour out my glory. Now, Father, tonight with our hands raised for our nation, you are not done with America. Blessed is the nation whose God is their God, whose God is their Lord. And, Lord, I declare this in Jesus' name. Lord, we are living in the days of prophecy right now of Luke 21, verse 11, of disease and earthquake and pestilence. And, Father, I declare over this group, over us, over our nation in Jesus' name, a Psalms 91 verse 10 anointing to fall upon America, Father. Lord, that no harm will overtake it. And Father, I pray that you give us time to snatch them from the fire, as Jude said. And Father, I pray for an awakening that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But I pray that in Jesus' name, heavenly angelic forces. Father, I saw it tonight. I saw it before service. I saw an angel uncapping a well that's on this property. And Lord, I thank you for the freedom that is here in Jesus' name. Would you give him a shout across this area? Come on. Come on, you can do better. <laughs> oh, I feel him. You may be seated if you can. I, I want to go ahead and say a couple things. And let me just say, I, I don't know that I felt the presence of God this thick since, well, Tuesday in my backyard. And uh, I mean, it happened or Wednesday. Maybe it was Wednesday. It was Tuesday. When, Tuesday. But I don't think I felt it in a corporate setting like this in a long time. And in just a moment, I'm going to preach to all the cave dwellers. All the ones that God has called to be the mobile upper rooms. All the ones that he says, if you will simply step. I need you to know he's going to breathe. He's going to breathe on you while I, uh, during this word tonight. He's going to, you're going to feel the presence of God breathing on you. And I want to go ahead and say this before I say any of the introduction stuff. And, and I just want to say how much I love Pastor. You know, uh, I don't know that anyone has wrecked my life more than you uh, this quickly. I honor you. You are a, uh, an apostle, a prophetic voice. You and Anna and just the whole team, everybody that's worked so hard here, I just honor you. I honor you, and I, 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 I believe that I have met family. Are you with me? <laughs> you just kind of know when you, I mean, that means you're going to be weird because we've got a weird family. And, and, um, but uh, I join a covenant with you and walk with you. Thank you for honoring us. Would we give the Lord a praise for that? Amen. Thank you for allowing me to. I, I don't want to belabor. I usually take a lot of time to get to know a group, and, and I don't think I've got to do that because we're in the same in the spirit. And uh, my beautiful wife, Karen, brings you greetings, and she, they're watching. She was going to be with me. She speaks at the I Am Remnant gatherings, and my little girl had a uh, gymnastics uh, event tonight, and uh, and so but I, I, I want to just go ahead and say for you that she greets you. And, and that's what I always say. It don't matter if you're ugly as long as you're anointed, you get a hot wife. Amen? <laughs> God takes care of it. Pray, Damien. And, and so. But I want to get right to this word here in just a second because tomorrow morning is big. And the Lord spoke to me a minute ago that at 10 o'clock in the morning we're going to do things different, something we had not planned. 
but I'm going to share about physical healing. And if you need healing in the morning, meet us in that room over there because we're going to lay hands on everybody for healing at 10 a.m. Are you ready for that? That's different. But the Lord spoke to me. We were to do that. There's some of you that need a manifestation miracle, a healing miracle, and maybe you've experienced it. And Pastor Mark's going to join me. We're going to lay hands on people. And I'm going to share just about the back side of the cross because we love the front side, but the back side brought our healing. Are you with me? And, and so tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And then, and then uh, Steve Smotherman, who's here with me, and you met Steve. Steve Jr. will be speaking after that. And then uh, tomorrow afternoon, right after lunch, Pastor Mark and I are going to be doing a, a time at lunch of just sharing. And then, and then right after lunch, um, Damien and our team is going to be doing a very powerful teaching on truth. So please be there. And then tomorrow night's going to be sick. You need to be here tomorrow night because my friend Steve Smotherman Sr. is going to be here. And are you ready for this weekend? It was two years ago. I was out jogging one day, but I don't, I don't really jog. I loiter. Amen? I'm just out loitering before the Lord. I'm just like praising him. and I try to run about 10 feet and cool off. And, then, and I'm out praising him, and I had just released, uh, was about to release the new book. It actually had just released uh, called Why Is God So Mad At Me About the Love of God? He's not mad at you. He's mad about you. And, and I'm praising the Lord, and all of a sudden, God began to speak to me, and he said, Son, I'm going to raise up a remnant. And what had happened three years ago, right before that, when the tornadoes came through the south, there was a sheet of paper that landed in my front yard right after the tornado came out of the tornado, and it just said, topping even these disasters will come a world war. And it's a sheet of paper that fell out of a book. I don't have time to go into it, but it wrecked me. I call it my letter from heaven because I picked it up, but it had fallen out of the tornado, and it just said, topping even these disasters will come a world war. And I remember going up to my prayer room and I said, God, what do you want from me? And he didn't speak for about two hours. And I just shook in his presence. And, and all of a sudden, God, God said, warn them. Tell them. And then it was after that that he spoke to me as I was out praying that day in Dallas. He said, Pat, I'm going to raise up a remnant. I said, God, I've heard of remnant, but I, I don't really know what it is. And I ran back to my hotel room and I began to look it up because he so lit me up. And, and, and I began to look up the word remnant. And the word remnant literally all through from the Old Testament to the New Testament. But it literally means what's left over after everybody else falls away. I'm going to get very intense with you, and I'm going to have fun with you too, but you need to stay with me for just a few moments. And again, I want to go ahead and tell you that the altar area is open because when humanity meets divinity, that's an altar call. And I need you to understand that Jesus came with a, with a sword and not a feather. And we're living in very intense times right now where he's separating the sheep from the goats. And the Lord gave me a title of a new chapter. I'm writing in another book right now just simply titled, uh, herding the goats but shearing the sheep. We love the sheep because their fur makes us money, but, but we'd, rather hear, we'd rather herd the goats because they'll believe and eat anything. And we're living in a very intense time. And so why are we calling this the remnant? Because God spoke to me. He said, Pat, I'm going to raise up a remnant in America. He says, the ones that have been waiting for me to pour out my spirit, that's who I'm about to raise up. So then I looked it up in dictionary.com, and, and the word remnant means what comes at the end of the generation. We are the bolt to tie this thing together before the coming of God. Or do you believe that? Give him a praise right now. Pastor. And I looked. Just I go. Okay, thanks. That's totally scared me. I'm like talking about end times, and then somebody, <laughs> I'm like, dear God. Rapture just happened. Y'all are still here. And, uh, <laughs> oh, that scared me. That was awesome. We're going to talk later. We're going to hang out. Me and, me and Daniel are going to hang out a little bit. But the Bible says in Romans, that sounds a lot better. In Romans 11, verse 5, so, so, so too at the present time there's a remnant chosen by grace. Listen, I've traveled two million miles and spoke to about two million people, and I've seen God pour out his glory, and people run to the altars, but this is a different day. The remnant is not the mass stadium crowds. I've preached in them. I love them. I've been to Australia, all those places. It's been incredible. But I believe the remnant is the ones that have been sitting and waiting. The ones that in their spirit, when they turn off the news and try to go to bed at night, they, they're like me. They have a sleep disorder called revelation. 
The ones that are seeing this thing coming, I, I, I literally could tell you, I, I write about it in Remnant, the dream I had one night of sitting in a restaurant and turning a radio station, there was a bunch of leaders with me, and every time I turned the radio station, it would say, Outbreak of God, and it would say, in New York, it would say, Outbreak of God in Miami, Outbreak of God in San Diego, and the, the announcer would say, the remnant is rising, and I woke up, and I looked at the clock, and it was at midnight exactly, I'd been asleep about 30 minutes, and my wife woke up, and, and I'm weeping before the Lord and laughing at the same time, and I ran up to my prayer room, and I emailed, uh, Pastor uh, mentioned Reinhardt Bunky. I emailed him, and I said, the glory is coming to America, and he emailed me back and said, I know, and I, I, I always get revelation like second. And there's a reason why I'm setting all this up because I'm about to take you on a journey for just a few minutes. Because one of the definitions of the remnant is the rag. The rag in the hand of God sent the clean up messes. That's what it says in dictionary.com. We're the ones that he's been waiting on. You're not an oops. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. God knew who you were long before your mother's pregnancy test. And he said, I've been waiting to raise you up. Are you getting that? Why? Because the remnant has decided at all costs. We will not let the, we will not allow the next generation to speak of the last generation as the group that did not want to see the move of God. So I don't know what he's going to do tonight, but I have a feeling in just a moment. In fact, I saw somebody here, and I don't know if your father's in a wheelchair, but the Lord says if you'll call and speak over them, and that father or that person in your life that's in a wheelchair, he said, I'll restore strength to their legs. I saw that a few moments ago. Now listen to me because I believe with all my heart as we move into this word, there's going to be a shaking in this area. Right after I began to write the book, I went for a walk one day and I couldn't hear from God. I was living under closed heavens. Nobody ever preaches about living under closed heavens, but you don't get anointed until you live under closed heavens because the teacher doesn't talk when he gives a test. I was out worshiping one more one afternoon. I said, Karen, I gotta go hear from God. I've I've got this deadline on the book and and, and, and I, I get out there and I begin to weep. I'm on a track, and all of a sudden the Lord gave me gave me 34 prophetic words to speak over and to write throughout the book. And you're gonna hear them, and you heard some of them in a moment ago in that video, but we put together 34 prophetic words to speak over our family. How many of you know if you're not speaking life over your family, the enemy will declare death? You gotta prophesy over your family. But I had my team. Pastor Mark, would you come here just for a second? We took and we put the manifesto, and it just says at the bottom, the Spitzbergens are remnant, and it's just the whole manifesto. I want to bless you with that. And, and so, because you are truly remnant, my friend. If you have your Bibles or your phones, I want you to look at James chapter 4, verse 8, and then we're going to go to Luke chapter 2. I must share a prophetic word over this place. See, I believe revival is when God gets so sick and tired of being misrepresented that he shows up. But see, I don't, I don't, I don't really want revival as much as I want reformation because reformation lasts. It lasts. I love revival, but I really want reformation. And I'll never forget, as I began to write this book, I had to fly to Singapore, and, and, and I speak at a conference last year, and, and I'm there, and I'm weary, I'm tired, and jet lag, and all that stuff. And, and, and I, I got a text from uh, a missionary evangelist, Reinhard Bunk, and he said, hey, meet me in my hotel tonight. I'm speaking in Singapore, too. So I drove over that night and jumped in a cab and went over and, and hung out with him. And, and he looked at me, and he said, you need to know that on your way home, God's going to give you a message. And so I'm flying home and been traveling too much, giving too much of my Jesus away, and I'm just kind of tired. I'm just laying there in the chair and, and laying back in the chair on the plane, and all of a sudden the Lord spoke to me. He said, it's the Simeon cry. I said, Lord, what, what is that? And I sat up in my chair somewhere over the Indian Ocean, and all of a sudden, I began to study Simeon. Can I talk about Simeon tonight? Because you've got to understand, there's all these people I want to meet when I get to heaven. I, I really, I mean, I just got like this whole list. We're going to drink coffee in heaven, and, and it'll probably have like a cool biblical name because all coffee shops and churches do. I love it. I always laugh like, like Holy Grounds or uh, Manna or, I mean, I, I love it. I always laugh. I'm like, well, oh, that's powerful. And... Starbucks won't be there, and soap and mine of the brains have fallen out. And but I, 
I'm going to set all these appointments. Now, let me read this scripture to you because the Bible says in James chapter 4. Now, follow me. James, the greater, if he was here today, he would not get invited to any churches because he would totally take everybody off. He was so politically incorrect. But James chapter 4, and we're going to come back to this for a reason. James 4 verse 8 says this. It says, come near to God and he'll come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Doesn't get any more clear than that. In other words, what I remember being at Disney World a while back and with my little girl, and she had gone to do this thing called Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. And it costs more than it says on the internet. And Abby had always wanted to do this. They dress you up like a princess. And I always tell her she's a princess and a champion. In fact, one night I was walking past her in the hallway, and all of a sudden she was still awake, and I didn't know it. And what you don't know about Abby is we got her when she was nine months old from China. She's my little gift from heaven. And, and, and I was walking past her, and I, I tell her every night, you're a princess and a champion. You're a princess and a champion. I was walking past her room one night, and she goes, Daddy. And I said, I said, what are you still doing awake? She said, I wanted to tell you something. I said, what? And she said, she said Daddy, you're a princess and a champion. I said, you stop it. But we had gone to Disney World, and all of a sudden, uh, I had made an appointment. It was last summer. I made an appointment for, to, to, to do the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique thing, and, and all day long, it's all she, she just, she loves princess stuff. And, and so we, we get to the castle, and it's at 6 o'clock, and she, they're going to take her, and it's like a beauty parlor thing, and, and really, I wasn't welcome, and... So I just kind of drop, I, I, I get ready to go in the door, and my wife looks at me, and I go, yeah, I'll just wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. So when they shut the door, I took off running all the way across Disney, uh, Disney World, rather. I ran all the way across Disney World because they, there's these, like, there's these turkey legs. They're the, the most anointed thing you will ever eat. But I had already reached my cholesterol limit for the day, so I knew I had to sneak and do it. And so I, I grabbed one. And I told my wife, I said, when you get ready to come out, just text me. <laughs> so I get my leg, and I'm sitting on the moat, and I'm just wearing it out. I'm wearing, I'm, I mean, there's no time to even wipe, wipe, the, wipe the oils. Men are walking by, and you could tell they're exhausted, and I would just look at them and say, keep going. But I'll never forget, because when Karen, when all of a sudden, when Karen called me, and she said, okay, we're ready. I just kind of threw the turkey leg. But then all of a sudden, I was holding a smart water. It's not working. <laughs> That's stupid. And, and all of a sudden, my little girl came walking out, and she was dressed like a princess. And, and, and about that time, Abby takes off running. And Abby weighs about 60 pounds. She's a little gymnast. And all of a sudden, she takes off running. And as she takes off running, I'm holding my smart water. And at that exact moment, as she jumps in the air, I screamed, you're the most beautiful princess that's ever lived. As she jumps into the air, I literally, split second, threw my water. True story. And grabbed her and spun her around. Why would I even tell you that? Because there comes a moment where you got to let go of what's not important to pick up what is. Now follow me. Because when I get to heaven, there's all these people I want to meet. I can't wait to see my sister. She walked into heaven seven years ago. I miss her real bad. Can't wait to see my little grandmother. Because I could preach anywhere in the world and she'd wait up to hear many, how, how many got saved. But there's some people in the Bible that I want to hang out with. I just want to sit and talk. I really I want to hang out with Jeremiah. We'll probably just cry. I want to hang out with Elijah and say, dude, you rode a twister. You are a redneck. I love you. I, I, I want to, there's all these people I just really, really want to hang out with. I want to hang out with, Des, with, excuse me, with David and just say, bro, I know what it's like to just want to dance with no clothes on. Amen. I do it. It's awkward. I want to hang out with Esther and say, wow, you spent one year getting ready for church for one meeting with the king, and we can't get there on time. 
I want to hang out with Joel. Say, bro, I saw what you said. I saw in the last days. I saw him pour his spirit out. Simon Peter seconded on Solomon's calling day on the day of Pentecost, but I saw it. I lived it. I want to hang out with John and say, what's it like to be known as the one that loves him the most? I want to hang out with Paul and say, what's it like? Because I love apologetics. I love, yeah, how many of you know no more stupid Christians? We're supposed to be smart. We're supposed to know what we believe. I want to say, what's it like to walk to march up Mars Hill and stand in front of the altar of the unknown God and declare the, all the hedonists and the hellenists and all the others sitting around who God really is? I want to hang out with a thief because he's me. I don't deserve it. But there's one guy, one fella that I really want to hang out with. A man by the name of Simeon. Because Simeon's the reason why I've never fit in on church staffs. Simeon's the reason why I left church services at 16 years old after Jesus walked into my bedroom. And I had an amazing encounter with him at 16 and I got saved. People ask me, who led you to Jesus? He did. He did. you got to understand where I'm about to go, and I feel the Spirit of God hitting me now, so I need to be careful. There's one guy I want to meet. Because he represents the reason why some of you are so miserable. Why you don't have patience anymore for stupidity. And normal Christianity, because he never called us to be normal. One guy by the name of Simeon. He's known in the Orthodox Church as the God Receiver. His occupation, shepherd, mission statement. Please don't let me depart till I see your glory. His name is the exact same name as Simon Peter in the Aramaic. He was the preparer. Who is he? A lot of people don't know about him. Because we always read during Christmas the first part, but we don't get to the second part of Luke chapter 2. But you know what I've learned? You're never going to get anointed till you get forgotten. And the greater the anointing, the greater the isolation. Who is he? The Bible says this in Luke chapter 2. And I'm going to hurry. I've probably gone long already. But I'm good with it. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 2 verse 28. And Simeon took him in his arms and he praised God saying, Sovereign Lord. I could stop right there because most people don't even know what that means. It means I am. It means he's in charge. It doesn't matter if a president appoints uh, uh, some, some, somebody to be a czar over Ebola. It doesn't matter what's happening with ISIS. The sovereign God is still sovereign. He hasn't been fired from the throne. Because I love that right there. It says, sovereign Lord. You really can tell if someone has a relationship with God by how they address them. Sovereign Lord. As you have promised... You may now dismiss your servant in peace. I could preach day, all day about peace because my whole life I thought it was an emotion until I realized it's a place you got to live. And I love what it says right here. Because, see, you got to know about Simeon. Simeon had a prophetic word given to him by God. Simeon was one of the writers. And it's believed that one day he's writing and God speaks to him. I'll come back to that in just a moment. But it's pretty powerful because here's a guy that nobody knew. In fact, most believe that he was probably about 200 years old when he died. He said, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all nations, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. You better get a hold of this because I'm about to preach this. Are you willing to be the remnant? 
because the Lord spoke something to me yesterday morning. He said, every Christian must decide whether or not they're willing to be ashamed for the truth or be cheered for the cultural lie. He said, I'm looking for people that are real. I'm looking for people that want my spirit back. Listen, you better get ready because I've asked my team and others if they would help pass out a little rag because from this night on, you're determining whether or not you're going to be remnant, whether or not you'll stand with all the lies that's going on. Would you watch this video because God's about to pour out his spirit. As the sun rises, he's looking for his bluff. He is searching the nations for the passionate, the ones who are seeking his face, the ones who went only to be in his presence. He is looking for those that will take a stand, who are moved by the Spirit and not by man, who will say enough is enough. Those who will stand up and cry out for His glory. He is looking for you. Now listen, because I'm learning the more you tell the truth, the smaller your circle gets. I told you a moment ago, I'm called to preach to the cave dwellers. Who are they? The ones that have been sitting and waiting on him to pass by. Not all the calamity, not all the noise, not all the wind, not all the earthquake. I want God. But see, you've got to realize we're living in a very intense day right now where truth is a new hate speech. You've got to understand that the enemy of truth is silence. And we're living in a time where i got to be really careful here because it's, it gets on me. But the Lord told me to declare this. And maybe you read the book and read Weeping Lions and Roaring Lambs or the chapter on the Oscar goes to because I am so sick of celebrity Christianity. The only red carpet in the Bible is where the blood of the martyrs was spilled. The only roped off areas where they were murdered. And the only celebrities in the Bible were the children. Those that Jesus said, don't you dare keep them from me. Because God says I'm looking for people that are real. But we're living in a time where grace is being preached without responsibility or accountability and without relationship, which makes it nothing but religion. And God says I'm looking for a church that will invite my my spirit back in and the Lord spoke to me the other day we've gotten so good at watering the blood down we've given it it's become a pink slip to the Holy Spirit and kick him out of the church because we want Father Son and Holy Spirit but when, rather than Father Son and Holy Spirit we want Father Son and Holy Scripture but God says my spirit is the only thing that's going to change this nation but when you remove a third of the Trinity one third from a hundred leaves 66.6 which is the spirit of the Antichrist the spirit of the anti anointing the 666 take a third from a hundred and that's what it leaves and God says I'm looking for people that are desperate enough to show up on a Friday night in a parking lot that will praise me, even if we look foolish, even if we look silly. Come on and praise him. And we are living in, time, in a time where culture is rewriting the Bible. And literally in Houston this week, they said, I want to see all the pastor's sermons to find out if they're coming against homosexuality. Do you know what homosexuality is? Let me just say it. I'm not going to be mean because I don't believe in throwing ropes. I believe in throw, or throwing rocks. I believe in throwing a rope and rescuing people because a lie, it's a lie upon a generation. Why? Because the commandment was go and multiply. So the devil says, you know what I'll do? I'll stop that right there. And I have seen them set, young people set free in our services. And the father wound that causes that the majority of the time. But God says, I am looking to restore identity to a generation. That's why he said, Pat, for years you've told a generation how to live. Now tell them who they are because identity breaks curses. We are the remnant. We are the ones that are going to rise up. And God says, I'm looking for somebody that will tell the truth, regardless of what anybody thinks. Why? Because the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy, you're going to find there will be times where people will have no stomach for solid teaching, but will fill up on spiritual junk food, catchy opinions that tickle their fancy. They'll turn their backs on truth and chase mirages, but you keep your eye on what you're doing. Accept the hard times along with the good. Keep the message alive and do a thorough job as God's servant. Jesus even said in Matthew 24, you're going to be persecuted for the truth. I love what Charles Spurgeon said. He said, discernment is not knowing the difference between right and wrong. It's knowing the difference between right and almost right. Are you still with me? And we're living in a time where 1,500 people are leaving the ministry every day. Every 90 minutes, someone quits the ministry. 
And there are mornings that I wake up after sharing these messages and I just look in the mirror or I'll get up and begin to worship the Lord and I'll just say, I'm just still glad I'm here. This is how I believe Simeon must have felt. See, I want to be the one in the crowd that looks past all the politics and the pundits and all the applause. And I love what the Lord said to me one day when I was worshiping. He said, Pat, he said, never desire to hear the cheer from the crowd, but listen for the cry from the cloud. See, I'm learning the end of yourself is really is the beginning of God. And there's that moment where you begin to cry out and you say, God, I've got to have you. I don't want anything else. Why? Because the remnant doesn't stop where they should have died because they know Jesus didn't. Am I talking to anybody? So what is the Simeon cry? It's a personal cry. This is God. If I don't see you, I want to die. Eventually it becomes that Public proclamation of, God, I've got to see your glory. I'm so tired of talking about it. I want to experience it. So I want you to go with me just to to a scene really quickly. Because this all started on a plane flying home. And the Lord said to me, he said, Pat, do you know why you've never fit in? Because I've never asked you to. That's what he said to me. And I got my Bible out and I turned to Luke chapter 2. And I began to study Simeon. So I just want to describe what I think it must have been like for Simeon. Because you got to understand, he was a translator of the Word of God. He was old. It is believed he was 200 years old. His death, the God receiver's death, is celebrated in the Orthodox Church on February the 3rd. Now that's important because Mary's candle moss, the purification, understand, every little boy, Jewish young boy, when they were born, a baby, had to be circumcised at eight days old. At 40 days, the mother had to go through a purification process if she had a Jewish child called candle moss. Mary's is celebrated on February the 2nd. The death of Simeon is celebrated on February 3rd. Are you still with me? Oh, you hadn't lived till you know that someday you're going to preach a sermon and die. And what you got to realize is, I love Simeon. Because I wonder if every morning he got up and said, could this be the day? I wonder the older he got. Weariness, exhaustion. Wonder if his eyesight was dull, if his hearing was going dumb. I wonder, I wonder how his body felt at the age he was at. But every morning he awoke wondering, could this be the day? See, I want to hang out with Simeon. Because you know what I've learned? Your position should never determine your passion, but your passion will determine your position. And I can just see him. See, what you don't know is Simeon's been given a promise. Nobody really knows him. But it's believed that one day when he's translating the Word of God, and he gets to Isaiah, verse 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him God with us. That at that exact moment, an angel of the Lord spoke to him and whispered to him and said, Simeon, you will see this child. <laughs> so you got to understand the reason why I'm preaching this. Because God gave me a vision recently of the tanks pulling onto the streets of America starting next October. Of anarchy breaking out. And God says, I'm looking for people that will stand regardless. I believe we're going to see things that happen. I hope I'm wrong. I've missed it a few times. But we're moving towards desperate times. And very soon, the city won't be able to keep people out of this building. 
Very soon there's going to be people running to the, the presence of God saying, I've got to have answers. Are you still with me? And the Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 25, look at this. Look what it says. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. Stop right there because that's something we never preach about anymore is righteous and devout. You know what righteousness means? It means my character doesn't change when your mood does. You know what devout means? I'm in this thing. I am in it. There's nothing that can detour what I'm called to do. I have set my face like flint, and I am in this thing. No matter what comes at me, somebody give God a praise offering because I'm talking about you stand up regardless. The Bible says he was righteous and devout, and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Now, this I didn't even know what that meant. I thought it's what you got when you don't really win. You didn't win the car, but here's a bottle of wax. Way to go. So I had to look it up because I'm like, what does the consolation of Israel even mean? And then suddenly I look it up, and it means summons for help, impartation, encouragement, comforter, the answer. In other words, consolation means everything you need in your life right now. And it goes on to say, watch. And he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Oh, you got to get a hold of that because that burns inside of me. I believe we are the generation that will not see death. I believe we are the ones that are going to lead the last day outpouring of the Spirit. I believe this with all my heart. And this interruption from the Holy Spirit changed everything. Because I love what it goes on to say right there. Moved by the Spirit. He went into the temple courts. Can I just say something about that right there? Because it goes on to say, when the parents brought in the child to do what was custom by the law. I love that. He was moved by the Spirit, not by the crowd. Not by the lights. Church, I don't care about aesthetics. I want the anointing. He wasn't like those. Those that treat God as some weekend warrior experiment. Those that think arriving with God is when you finally get some title or parking place in some little some little position those that the thought of having an encounter with God freaks them out because they'll have to lose self he wasn't like those he was remnant nobody knew him I honestly believe we're living in a time, and I love what Steve Smotherman Sr., who's speaking tomorrow night, said, where we, the only persecution we really face in America right now is prosperity persecution. If God doesn't do what we want him to do and he doesn't, doesn't act like our lottery ticket, then, boy, we're being persecuted. But in other nations right now, I got an email this morning, and I've got to be careful what I say. I know of missionary families that their house was surrounded this morning and children were beheaded this morning. sent the email to Karen, my wife, this morning. I said, she emailed back. She said, dear God. So a missionary saying, please don't forward this to anyone. Just pray. Where's the remnant? Where's the ones that will wait long enough for the glory to be poured out and not care what anybody thinks? Reminded of about a year and a half ago, I was in Phoenix speaking at a men's conference and all of a sudden, I, I look over, and all oh, my guys were there with me, the guys that traveled with me, and we're eating breakfast in the hotel, and I just had workout clothes on. I mean, no shower yet, hadn't shaved, nothing. I mean, we had spoke late that night, and we're going to get ready to go to the church, so we all met for breakfast, and all of a sudden, I look over, and my guys, my guys are standing there talking to a guy that literally looks like he's off Duck Dynasty or Gandalf. And all of a sudden, I hear him talking, and I'm like, who's this guy? He's got, like, pajamas on. And he walks over and holds out his hand. He says, hi, my name is John Michael Talbot. And I stopped. And I looked at my guys. I said, this is royalty. This was one of the leaders of the Jesus movement. It's one of the fathers of worship in America. And we start talking, and he starts pouring into my life for about four hours. And he looks at me and he says, you know, the Lord told me, the Lord told me to write a book. He said, I'm thinking about writing a book called The Remnant. And I, like a little child, I looked at him, up at him and I go, oh, wow. 
I said, I'm about to write a book called The Remnant. He said, I know. And I said, John Michael, would you tell me what The Remnant is? Because he can remember baptizing 3,000 people a day off this ocean during the Jesus movement. And all of a sudden he looks at me and he says, Pat, the remnant is the people who don't just practice the externals of their faith, but it's the people who know Jesus. It's that which remains from what used to be big. It is the yeast that will make the bread rise again. Come on and give my God a praise offering. Oh, I'm almost done. I'm almost done because we're going somewhere. It's going to get intense. You know what I love about Simeon? He recognized his moment. He understood that things were going to get very intense and very soon it would be the massacre of the innocent. He understood things were going to get very dark because a Messiah was about to be born. Have you ever had a moment? See, I know what it's like for two and a half years to wait after my wife has a dream of my beautiful daughter crying in another nation saying, come get me, mommy. After 10 years of wanting to have a child, I'll never forget the night that my family and I, in fact, most people have never seen this video. It, it, we just found it in our family archives. The night that my family and I, 11 years ago next week, walked up the stairs of that government building in China. The night that suddenly, Mama would meet daughter, brother would meet sister, and I would meet what would become my namesake. See, I know what it's like to walk into a place and be scared to death. Will she like me? Well, I know what it's like to take my daughter in my hands for the very first time, all because my wife had a dream. The night that mama met daughter. The night that my daughter's history would be changed. The night that the world would never even really understand the battle that it took to get her. But see, I've learned a father doesn't leave you where he finds you. He takes you where he's going. I know what it's like to grab my little girl in my arms and say, from this day forward, it doesn't matter how you were born. Let me tell you how you're going to live. That's what the father does. Give the Lord a praise offering. Amen. So you got to follow me because i got to close. i gotta, I got to get a hold of this. Because, see, what I'm learning is when God shows up, it's not about us. God will never show up in a service where, where we're going to take credit for it. But his glory is here tonight. And what you've got to realize is, I love this, because the enemy is trying to distract some of you from your miracle. And it says he recognized his moment. Simeon understood. Now watch, watch, because it's going to get powerful. Because I can see him that morning. Maybe he didn't feel like going to church. He's exhausted. He's old. And all of a sudden, I can see him as he's starting to get dressed to go do his priestly duties. I wonder... If as he was getting dressed, as he was putting on the tallit, as he was putting on the tent, I wonder as he's getting dressed, if he began to feel something stirring in his spirit. Like, oh, this isn't going to be a normal church day. Something is shifting in the atmosphere. I wonder as he's walking towards the church, he shuts the door of his little apartment, and he starts walking towards the church. They already think he's crazy because he's been dumb enough to tell some of the wrong people his dreams like Joseph probably. And so all of a sudden, he's walking towards towards church and they're lined up to see him I mean he's married him he's buried him he's been a pastor for so long and as he's walking towards the church they're lined up and they're waiting and so he's greeting him he's greeting him he's saying hello he's walking but something in his spirit says this is not a normal day something in his spirit says there's more and all of a sudden friends as he's Greeting people outside the temple as he's hugging people. He notices there's this couple way back there. Now, he knows who they are. Because when he looks at him, this is the way I imagine it. I bet Joseph smiled at him. I bet he said, hello, pastor. Simeon knew who they were. He had heard all the gossip prayer requests. He knew who they were. But as he gets closer and closer... He can't even think about the people around him anymore. There's something about this couple. It's like a rope is pulling him towards the holy of the holies. It's like something is pulling him in. And all of a sudden, as he gets closer and closer, he begins to realize, because he looks into the face, 
and a tear rolls down Mary's face, the tear of vindication. She said, hello, pastor. And as he starts walking closer, people are trying to get his attention. But when you're really having a move of God, you just got to shut out the voices. And all of a sudden, as he starts walking closer and closer, a smile breaks out in him. And he begins to get stirred. Because you got to understand, this is Mary's moment for Candlemas. It's celebrated on February the 2nd. His, birth, his death is celebrated. Simeon, the God receiver, is celebrated his death on February the 3rd. And as he's walking towards this couple, I can see him as he gets closer and closer. Something begins to rear up in his belly like this is the moment. Something is shifted in the atmosphere. All the longing, all the waiting, all the crying out. And all of a sudden, as he reaches towards him, he smiles and he says, excuse me. Can I, can I hold him? And Mary smiles as she stretches out the child. There was nothing in his hands. And as he reaches towards the child, you're not getting what I'm saying. He was saying, excuse me, ma'am. Can I hold the lion of the tribe of Judah? Can I hold the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star? Oh, you're not getting this yet. You ought to be getting a hold of this. He was saying, excuse me, ma'am. Can I hold peace? Can I hold authority? Can I hold power wrapped in flesh? Excuse me. Can I hold the only begotten? Excuse me. Can I hold John chapter 1, the Bible? Can I hold the Word made flesh? Can I hold your family Bible? And as he, Can I hold healing to the nations? And as he stretches out his hands and he's holding the baby and he begins to hold the baby up, it was a circle of life moment. I bet the animals in San Diego at that moment suddenly dropped. Why? Because the king was being revealed to creation. The promise of 5,000. Oh, you're not getting this yet. All of a sudden, Isaiah leaned up in heaven and said, there's the lamb. Daniel said, there's the wheel within a wheel. <laughs> Ezekiel said, one with fire, the one who stands on the wall. Oh, you're not getting this. Adam said, the elder brother that restores the promise. Oh, and at that exact moment, the Bible says in Luke chapter 2, Simeon took him in his arms and he's praised God and he said, I am Yahshua. I'm ready to go home now. I imagine as he rubbed his back in which the government was set upon his shoulders. Rubbed the back in which healing came. Rubbed his little hands which would be nailed for me. Rubbed his feet which would carry my cross but someday will stand at the gate beautiful in the Mount of Olives and split it. Who bore all my sorrows. Rubbed his forehead which would be pierced for my thought life. Rubbed his little cheeks, which would take on the face of humanity. I imagine as he stood there weeping, he smiled. And he, he handed the baby back and he said, you got to understand. Come join me, Josh. It was his last sermon. I imagine the religious leaders that gathered around freaked out. He is a dead man. Look at that crazy fool. He is just blasphemed. Because they were so used to preaching that he was coming, they didn't recognize when he arrived. But the Bible says in Luke 2, the child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. 
Then Simeon blessed him. See, you're not getting this. I worked for 10 years on large staffs and did not fit in. I preached in hundreds of churches. Thousands of altar calls. And gone back to my hotel room and said, when? 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 When, God? And then he went and dropped a letter in my front yard. Do you know how many people have prophesied over tonight? And Simeon blessed them and he looks at mama and he said, looks at Mary and he says, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and it'll be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And he said, oh, oh, the pastor's heart came out right here. He said, mama. Someday your heart's going to be pierced. As the Son of God hangs upon a tree. And I can see as he hands the baby back and he says, Thank you for being a vessel of the Holy Ghost. I got to go now. I bet the, the other priests were gathering, whispering. He's a dead man. <laughs> he said, I got to go. As he took off running across the courtyard, he was laughing. <laughs> I saw the Lord. And when he went to walk through his little apartment, I bet that he shut the door behind him. And he said, Thank you. I can go now. And I bet as he laid back on his bed, they were banging on the door. Simeon, let us in. You old fool. You missed it this time, pal. But as he shut his eyes, he saw Isaiah chapter 6. The angels were crying holy. The train of his robe filled the temple. But I wonder if God smiled at him as Simeon fell on his knees. I saw heaven last year briefly. Maybe I'll tell you about it this weekend. I know what it's like to fall asleep in a hotel room two years ago when God walked in my hotel room because I was sound asleep and I began to scream and shake. And all I could see was his feet. And he said, Pat, if you'll give me everything you have, I'll give you everything I have. Then he said, Pat, tell a generation, if they'll give me everything they have, I'll give them everything I have. Then he left. And I got out of bed in a hotel room in Arkansas and began to dance before the Lord at 1.30 in the morning. And he took me to John chapter 7 where it says, Ask, seek, and knock, which is a perpetual verb. It never stop, never stop asking, never stop seeking, never stop knocking. I don't know what he's about to do, but his glory is coming. And we're supposed to be changed if we see him according to 2 Corinthians. Am I right? I don't have a veil on and neither do you. Kepe. Sebe. Korebe. Right where you're sitting, 
I'm going to ask you to do something that's going to seem silly. But it's what he's telling me. If you're watching by, tel- by internet, do the, do the same. I'm so honored you would come on a Friday night to be remnant. But would you, KB, would you um, stretch your hands out like this? Lean in. Say, excuse me, sir. Can I hold you? Here he comes. I release you to open the cry, the valve. Cry out now. I want you to stand up if you can, but I don't know if you're going to be able to because it's going to get kind of intense. Welcome to Remnant. Excuse me, sir. Can I hold you? Shota. 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 I saw the Lord uncapping a whale on this property. I saw an angel of the Lord. The only other time I've seen that is when I was preaching at Brownsville. I saw the same thing at Brownsville when I was there. But I want you to stretch your hands out. I've never done anything like this, and, and, and it's weird. But say, excuse me, Lord. Would you uncap the whale? to 25. I got to give an altar call. Okay, babe. God is not a man that he should be mocked. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're la base, cause, condere, bes, potere, pe, cote, se, ho. God is not a man that he should be. Mocked. With your hands out in front of you, we're going to do it again. But this time we're going to do it differently. There are people in this area that you have invited the enemy to supper with the Savior. And God says... Clean out the dining room. There's only room at the table for you and him. He will not share a meal with Satan. He said, I will be your bread. I will be your life. And there's people in this room that have allowed sin in this room of heaven that have allowed sin to inoculate them from the power of God and allow disease to run rampant called sin in your mind, in your heart, and your body. 
And God says, Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, died on a cross, rose again on the third day. While on that cross, he said, I thirst, I forgive, and it is finished. And he became the ultimate propitiation of sin, the ultimate mercy seat, the ultimate lamb led to the slaughter. But on the third day, he rose, taking back the authority. For the next 40 days, he prepared the disciples, sent them to an upper room. They waited 10 yet 10 days. And on the morning of the 10th day, the remnant was birthed. The New Testament church. But God says, would you visit me at the cross and let me nail your sin to the tree? Hold your hands out in front of you and say, Lord, there's sin in my life. Let me see it in my hands right now. You see it? Wash your hands. Cleanse your heart. No more double-minded. All over this area. I'm not going to beg you. We're going we're to go deep. And some of you are going to have trouble walking in just a moment. I need to go ahead and warn you now. It's going to get weird. You're going to trip over God. He's a speed bump on your journey that will slow you down to His presence. If you have sin in your life, I will not beg you, manipulate you, or talk you into it. If you have sin in your life and you want Jesus Christ to invade your life, maybe you've never accepted Him or you've just allowed sin to occupy your life and you say, I need freedom and I don't give a rip what nobody thinks. If you have sin in your life, walk to the front and stand. I don't normally do it this way, but it's what God's saying. I'm telling you, as you walk, things are going to fall off of you. Pornography, fear, anger, hurt. If you have sin in your life, walk to the front now. Come on, you're the first. Come on, I don't give a rip. I'm a drug dealer's kid, so sin doesn't just stand right across here. Sin does not scare me. My dad got saved when I was five. I'm a drug dealer's kid. Stand right there. We go. We're not done. <laughs> just beginning. We're not done. I want everyone that has begun to treat God as a sideshow in your life to walk up here now. You say he's just become a compartmentalized part of my life. Walk up here now. Come on, teenager. Christ Jesus, a shelter from the storm, the Savior of my life. I got to wait. The Lord keeps saying wait. God says, I will have dominion in your life or nothing. He does not share well. He is a jealous God. Just gonna wait. I don't normally do that. There's a man in this room, in this area. God says, if you will give me everything, I'll restore your business. Come on. Now, this is what we're going to do. I know we haven't, we're, everybody's going to up, end up here periodically. So just hold on. It's going to, we're all, all been up, yeah. Hold on just one second. Just one second, Josh. Just one second. The wait needs to come. The glory of the Lord. I invite you, Father, to lay upon every person in the front now. It's going to get heavy. He's breathing on you. He's doing a John 20 moment in the disciples' upper room, breathing on you. Now hold your hands out in front of you like this. 
Look at your sin and say, Lord, wash me. Forgive me. Invade me. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, forgive me. I'm warning you, it's going to get intense. I've just gotten to warn you because I keep trapping to remind myself I hadn't been here. Say, Father, I need you to breathe on me now. I want to wash my hands. Everybody all the way to the back. Hold your hand. I wash my hands. Say, God, if you're watching my internet, say, I wash my hands. Forgive my sin. Get ready. Say, Lord, I invite you to make yourself at home in me. I declare you are God. Invade my life right, right now. Cry out to him now. Cry out. <laughs> it's going to get heavier. It's going to get heavier. You've invited the cabal. Everyone that is desperate for God, come stand behind them now. You say, I want a God encounter. I want him to show himself to me. Come closer. Come on. Josh, the Lord says you are a piercer of darkness. You said to the Lord, Lord, I'm weary. I need a refreshing. And you said, God, I'm coming here. And I, just, I know I'm supposed to serve and minister, but I'm tired. Hey, Rabba, Kone, Nalalabah, Ninemo, Serebekete, Ere Rabasote, Arememomolati, and Nalabiketi, and Nalabasote. God's unfreezing your spirit. Everyone, get ready. Some of you are going to be healed. Money, body, mind, and soul. The Bible speaks strongly about harassing spirits. We are living in a time, Jesus, when he would say, you're healed, go and sin no more. We now just say, go and do your best. God says there is a dividing line where you go and sin no more, where you drop that junk. You say no more. I am cutting that root off. John 14 says he'll make you his, his child. He'll be your father. John 16 says I'll leave you to truth. What are you talking about, Pat? Why are we still standing here? Because he told me to. You've heard the word, Romans 10, and your faith has been restored, so get ready. Hold your hands out like this and say this is your consolation moment you know 
Fill in the blank, baby. That's what he is. You need peace. You need authority. You need freedom. You need finances. You need healing. You need joy. You need power. You need a, I don't care what it is. In fact, God's going to quiet the voices, the tormenting voices of demonic powers in some young people's lives right now. We're going to say no more voices. That's a lie from the enemy. Some of you can't go to sleep at night because of fear. You're living in fear. Fear is overwhelming our nation. 82% of our nation is afraid right now. But God says, for I do not give you the spirit of fear, timidity, but power, love, and soundness of mind. Whatever you need, it may be a laundry list, but we're going to just dump it all together. Your hands are clean. You get to hold him now. You just wash your hands. Do it one more time. Say, God, wash my hands. Cleanse my heart. No more double-minded. I'm in this thing. Hold your hands out in front of you and say, get ready. It's going to get intense. I hope you can stand. Simply hold out your hands and say, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, Father. Excuse me, Abba. Can I? Oh, it's going to get intense. Can I? Hold. Your glory glory. now. Now. Come on, Simeon, lean in and grab it. Grab it, grab it. (laughs) The intangible, tangible God. Hold your hands out in front of you. You know what you need. I can't do it for you. This is the consolation moment. Say, and you got to say it out loud. If you ain't going to be bold, don't even worry about it. But say, excuse me, Lord. Now you got to fill in the blank. And I want you to scream it, whatever it is. Think about it. This is your consolation. Can I hold? Now tell him, tell him, tell him. Arabakata, son of Arabakata. Yes, yes, Father. Authority, yes. authority, 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 authority. Kuna la 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 la. Joy. Yes. Lord. Same me 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 Joy. Sata la 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 la. Every promise restored. Joy. Kede be sete kete. Kede ba son de de be kede ba sata. Ah, peace. Ah, watch out. Cry out, cry out, cry out. Don't you stop crying out. Don't you stop crying out. <laughs> Can't, is, yeah, okay, lean in. Lean in. Lean in. Say, lean in and say, excuse me, Lord. Can I hold the remnant anointing? <laughs> Take it, Josh. Drink it. I break loneliness. Loneliness be gone. Peace and authority. Peace and authority. Now hold your hands out and say, Father, you're a great dad. Can I hold your gifts? <laughs> Let the remnant awaken. Let the remnant awaken. Said he's putting yeah. stuff in your hands. It's going to get heavier. Yeah. It's going to get heavier. 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 People are going to think we're a bunch of crazy zombies. No, 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 no. We are temples of the Holy Ghost. Said he. I hope you think we're crazy. Because if ISIS can march, the remnant can march. If Ebola can invade, glory can invade. We call back the promises of San Diego. Yes. In the name of Jesus, by the mighty power of the living God. Oh, Father, we thank you for your fire. We 
thank you for your glory. We thank you for your presence. We Put, thank you for the mic. Take your hand and touch the person's hand. Right beside you. Keep one hand like this. Touch it and say, promises. Restored. Someone say it bold and say, say it, say it bold. Promises restored. Promises restored. Promises restored. Marriages healed. Families restored. Families restored. Now stretch your hands out. It's going to get heavier. Stretch your hands out one more time. Say, Lord. Can I hold? Your goodness. Come on, Simeons. Lean a little farther and say, Excuse me, Father. <laughs> Can I hold peace, which passes my understanding? <laughs> Sorrow, leave me alone. Man, I feel sorrow leaving some bodies right now. I feel yeah. sorrow leaving some bodies. Yeah. Sorrow leaving yeah. bodies. Yeah. 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 Oh, this is what the Lord yeah. says. Yeah. Lean forward, lean forward. Yes. Lean yeah. forward and say, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Lord. I'm tired of depression. Stretch farther, stretch farther. You got to reach for this. Say, can I hold, can I hold? Soundness, soundness of mind? That's oh. right. I command in the name of Jesus every demonic, confusing, power, yeah. harassing spirit yeah. to leave every person now and be cast to the dark places yeah. in the name of Jesus to the dry yeah. places. I command freedom over the minds of children. I command yeah. authority over households. Yeah. Demons leave houses. I command every drunkening spirit, demonic yeah. spirit that shifts the mind of man to be gone off of every believer in this area. Say this out loud. Excuse me, sir. Can I, Can I hold, hold you? you. <laughs> you are not a shack. You are a temple. Take the for sale sign down. <laughs> so one last thing and I'm done. Hold your hands out. Say, excuse me, sir. Welcome home. <laughs> oh, I feel joy coming. Some of you are going to struggle through the night. You're going to start tripping over God. You're going to get up to go to the bathroom and you're going to He's going to be standing in the hallway I'm warning you. This happens to me. I know it's weird. Boom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the cross, oh God. For the glory of God. Say, excuse me, sir. Thank you. For the cross. Ha <laughs> ha. Lift your hands and cry out. Come on, come on, cry out, cry out. Thank you for the cross. Oh God, come on, praise him. Price and made the way. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross that carried all my sins away. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross that opened up the door and made the way to you. Thank you, Jesus, 
for the cross that carried all my sins away. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross that opened up the door that made a way for me to come today. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross that bore my sins away. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross that gave me life, the truth, the way. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross <laughs> that bore my sins away. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross, the life, the <laughs> truth, the way I go with you. Will you lead me? I will follow. Will you lead me? I will go. Will you lead me? I love you, Jesus. Jesus, I'm with you. You're with me. I'm with you. You're with me. I'm with you. I am yours. You are mine. Jesus, you're the vine. I'm the branch. says the glory that is to come you will no longer compare to what took place days gone by the Lord says I am pouring my promises on this house the Lord says what you have considered a plague, what you have considered a hiding time, he says, has been a preparation. He says, I 
am unrolling a scroll over this house that my fingerprints are down the sides of the scroll with oil and blood. And God says this day, the words that have been spoken over this house, the things that have been said that this place would never again be mighty. God says, is it a lie? It is a lie. And on this day, God says, I unleash my wind. I unleash my glory. And they will come and see that which was prophesied of the Lord, that I have chosen this people as my abiding place, as my place. And this day, God says, worry no more. For I will do things that will blow your mind, <laughs> says the Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, oh God. Have your will. Have your way. You're the truth, the life, the way. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. That bore my sins away. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross, the truth, the life, the way. I'm in you, you're in me. I am yours, you are mine. I'm with you, you're with me. We the branches, you the vine. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I'll be thanking you forever. Come on, praise God, him. God, I'll be thanking you forever. God, I'll be thanking you, oh God. God, I'll be thanking you forever. You got to be thanking you forever. Upon my knees, upon my face. Going to be thanking you forever. Going to be praising you forever. <laughs> You're everything that I desire. I want nothing more than you. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross that bore my sins away. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. You're the truth, the light, the way. I'm in you. You're in me. I am yours. You are mine. I'm with you, you're with me, we the branches, you're the vine. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody shout, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Like a I'm mighty in you. rushing wind. You're in me. Come on, cry out. I am yours. You are mine. I'm with you. You're with me. We the branches. You're the vine. Come on, sing it. Thank you, Jesus. Cross. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hey, hey. Oh, sovereign Lord. Sing it one more time. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross that bore my sins away. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. You're the truth, the life, the way. I'm in you. You're in me. I am yours. You are mine. I'm with you, you're with me, we're the branches, you're the vine, thank you Jesus, hey, 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 shout at your voice, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss 10 a.m. in the morning. 
I've never had God interrupt me and say, I want you to share about healing and lay hands on people. It is not what we had planned. My team had no idea. But I feel that tomorrow. We're going to be there. Hey, listen. I know Saturday mornings for some of you is rest and recovery day. But I feel like God's calling it rescue and recover day. And so I challenge you to be here. San Diego, we'll see an awakening. You've got to be ready for tomorrow night. I'm asking you to be ready. I'm asking you to dream big. What if he pours out his glory? He's already doing it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, the Lord spoke to me. He said, oh, yeah. Pat, I said, God, I don't want Brownsville. I don't want Toronto. I don't want, I don't want any of the moves of God I've seen. I want now. Yeah. Now and you I, I don't. I, I don't want anything, and I believe the remnant movement is something that's going to look so different. It's not about living like heaven on Sunday and acting like the devil on Monday. It's about a transition in the thinking that says, no matter what, I am going to praise him. I'm his remnant. You are his, Who are you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Let San Diego know who you are. Who are you? Let the West Coast know who you are. Who are you? Say it. I I am am remnant. remnant. Give God a shout. Sing it one more time. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. They bore my sins away. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. You're the truth, the life, the way. I'm in you. You're in me. I am yours. You're mine. I'm with you. You're with me. We're the branches. You're the vine. Thank you, Jesus. I wish I could shout real loud right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross that bore my sins away. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. You're the truth, the life, the way. I'm in you. You're in me. I am yours. You are mine, I'm with you, you're with me, we're the branches, you're the vine, thank you Jesus. Find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you love them, say you'll meet them here tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, come on man, let's just compel people to come, but regardless, you come.